Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Okay, I ask that you bear with me as we return back to 1 John chapter 3. Uh, last night we did the study and I just was shown more in, in uh, just amazed on chapter 3. And I'd like to go over it again and show you the transition of chapter 3 a very important subject it says behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us Christian that we should be called the sons of God therefore the world knows us not because it knew him not all right we're starting this chapter off with Christians children of God that's a great thing to start off and thus any born-again Bible believing Christian has believed on the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ we are none of the world we are of God. We are his children. He is our father. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. And we shall see him as he is. This is a hope to the Christian. We got to live in the world. We got to make money for food, for clothing, lodging. We're to witness the lost people. We're to help other Christians. But our hope, our main thing is to leave this world and see Jesus Christ. And that would be by rapture or by death. But definitely rapture, even if you die. The blessed hope of the Lord Jesus Christ coming is coming, whether we die or we are alive. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, was spoken of by Paul, and we see here John, the beloved disciple. He's looking for Jesus too. It wasn't just a thing that Paul was doing. We saw it with Peter. He wants Jesus to come, and they're teaching the people, look for Jesus. What a great thing. We are the sons of God, and Jesus is coming for us one day. And every man that has this hope, in him purifies himself, even as he is pure, we saw in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. So at that moment that Christ does come, we have an opportunity to get rid of wood, hay, or stubble by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are able to get gold, silver, precious stone. We live by Christ and we don't want to be caught in our sin. And being children of God, looking for Jesus Christ, and we've got a hope that the world doesn't have. The glorious hope. Whosoever commits sin transgresses the law, and sin is the transgression of the law. Now we're moving to sin and the law. We have stepped away from the Christian, the sons of God, our hope in God, our purification we are stepping now into the realm of sin sin the law tells me I am a sinner I'm a saved Christian but the wages of sin is death I'm still going to die because I'm a Christian that has not changed my body getting saved does not change my condition as far as my sins but the blessed uh, the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now we use Romans 6.23 to witness to people. That's proper. That's good. But that verse is written to Christians. We're still sinners. We're the sons of God. We got a blessed hope, but we're still sinners. We're transla translation ourselves in this chapter of who we are and what we are. And we and ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. So we're sinners. 
saved by grace, and Jesus Christ took away our sins can take our sins away first john 1 9 and in christ there is no sin so when he comes we shall be like him that means i'm going to be sinless one day so in between here and when jesus comes and, and the, the revelation that he takes away our sins i'm a sinner but oh the expectation i've got for later on i will be sinless like Jesus Christ glorious I won't have troubles I won't have death no more by Jesus Christ wonderful whosoever abides in him Christ sinneth not whosoever sinneth has not seen him neither knows him so in the eyes of God it's this flesh that's going to go in a grave Lord willing Lord tarries it's this rotten flesh that sins in the eyes of God God is displeased with my flesh but I am righteous by his son. And I have not seen his son, never seen his son. It's by faith. Substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So, while in this body still, I've got hope. I've got faith. I'm a sinner. I've got the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse me. I have opportunity to, to be before the judgment seat of Christ clean. I keep my eyes open. Little children. Again, this is a growth process of Christian. Babes in Christ, little children. Little children, let no man deceive you. A warning. We're jumping to a warning. Now, let's see. We're seeing the child of God. We've seen our blessed hope. We've seen that Jesus is coming. And when we do sin, we have the blood of Jesus Christ. We have the ability to look forward to one day being sinless. But while we're still in this body, we're moving somewhere here in this chapter. We're looking at People can deceive us. And we got to be careful. we got to be watchful. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. Even as he is righteous. I can be righteous as Jesus Christ. I can be sinless as Jesus Christ. For it shall be one day I'll be like him. When he should appear. Verse 2. All the great benefits that I have forward to look for in my Christian life is to be like Jesus Christ in his righteousness and in his sinlessness now we're moving somewhere he that committed sin we're still on sin is of the devil all right we've gone from the mighty Christian being in God by Jesus Christ righteousness our hope we have moved into our sins we sin now we're now we're getting to we're going away from God and we're going on the other side of the spectrum. We're going to look now at the enemy, Satan, the devil, the dragon, the serpent. And what is his doing? His doing is sin. What is God's doing? God's doing is hope to, to have us to be sinless, to have us be like his son, to be formed into the image of his son, to be like him, and to be righteous. What is Satan? He's out to make a sin. From Genesis 3. For the devil sinned from the beginning. He's the reason for the fall. He's the reason why there's iniquity. He's the reason why that there is darkness and unrighteousness. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Okay, we've spoken about sin. We moved to Satan, the author of sin, the beginner of sin. And yet, with that, Christ Jesus is still. The answer Christ Jesus is still our victory Christ Jesus is still able to save us and to not make us like Satan Satan will have a fall Satan is just rebellion against God but he's in the midst of the Christian life here he is as we're children of God as we got the hope as we can be sinless here in the middle of our life Satan shows up we're, we're, we're moving we're moving away from God and we're in the realms of sin and devil now. We're moving away. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Anyone who is saved, who is born again, you don't sin, but you sin. The flesh sins. That thing has been spiritually cut away from our soul and from our spirit by the sword of the spirit. By that sharp sword of Hebrews 4.12. And we need to confess our sins. 
but we're righteous by Jesus Christ. No, we have Satan in the midst of us. We're not ignorant of his devices. He's seeking about as a lion to trying to devour us. He's trying to get us to sin. He's trying to get us against God. And in God's eyes, we are born still his children, even when Satan has shown up in the middle of his our life. We are still his son. God has not left us. God has not abandoned us because Satan's come into our life. Matter of fact, we can have be even stronger. Verse eight: Destroy the works of the devil. We don't let. We don't have to let Satan win in our lives. We can call upon the Lord Jesus Christ. We can put our armor on, and we can do victory through Christ, through God, over the devil. For his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he's born of God. That's our new nature. My new nature is I'm not a sinner. The old nature, it still attacks me. And Satan's going to try to bring that old nature out more than the new nature. Satan's going to try to bring that flesh out more than the spirit of God. So we got a battle going on in the middle of this chapter. We got a battle on we, we, what the great things God's done for us, and now sin has come in. Now Satan's in the middle of our life, but there's still victory. There's no loss of hope because Satan's in our life. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever does not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Okay, now we draw a line right here. We've got now the children of God. Chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. All the great hope, all the great expectation. You are sinless. You are precious in the, God, in the eyes of God through Jesus Christ. And then the other side of the spectrum now, we move away from God more. We've got children of the devil. They don't have no hope. They don't have the ability in Satan to be sinlessness. They don't have the ability in Satan to be righteousness. They are completely opposite of what we are. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Satan has no love, for God is love. What marks the Christian over a child of the devil? Love. Sacrifice. Charity. Now, Satan will use the word charity as, here's 50 bucks and go feed some kids in Africa somewhere. Or here's 75 bucks, let the kid get, uh, you know, his, his teeth fixed. Or here's a shoe box with all kinds of coloring, all kinds of stuff. That's, that's not charity. See, charity for devil is cash, check, money order. Put it on the IRS, but it doesn't get you nowhere. It does not do any pleasure to God. Satan is the enemy. Children of the devil are the enemy. I am no longer and will never be a child of Satan no longer because of the new birth, because of the new nature. I cannot go back to Satan's family. But I need to be advised, we need to be advised that there are family of Satan out there. And they're not anything like us. And the Bible says as far as they go into all the world and preach the gospel. But we're not talking about that. Not as Cain. All right, so we're looking at Cain now. Cain is an example of a child of Satan. He builds a city. He's got music in his family. He's the metal workers of the family. He gets religion, Genesis chapter 4. And in his religion, he is angry with someone who God is happy and pleased with and righteous. And he kills the man of God. Abel. So from Genesis 4, we see the two families. We see the family of God, Abel. He brings blood. It pleases God. Abel is singing. Abel is happy. He is this, oh man, as happy as a clam. Because God is pleased with him. You got Cain. Not a literal son of Satan. His mother did not have no relations. Genesis 4.1 uh, Adam and Eve had relations and they brought forth Cain. But Cain, on the other hand, he is the child of the devil. So this chapter, we're looking at a save. We're looking at the enemy. Now we're looking at the enemy's children. He brought what he wanted to bring. He did not bring what God brought. And when God said, I'm not pleased with that, he got angry. He got bitter. God gave him a chance. 
and he ends up killing. He hated his brother. Now, I would assume by this passage in chapter 3 that Abel loved his brother, being right with God, that if Cain, when we assumed, if, if Cain was said, you know, brother, somehow God was pleased with you. Can I have a lamb? Can I have an ox? Can I have some of the blood? Can I pay for it? David today we learned when it came to building that temple at the threshing floor. He says, I'm going to pay for the sacrifice from God. Cain had that same ability and Abel was happy, a son of God with great pleasures looking forward to. It. He would have gave him or sold him at least at a good price that Cain could afford what was needed. Cain, I mean, Abel showed love. Cain shows us the side of Satan. There's no love in a brother. So what do we get from the atmosphere of Genesis chapter 4? Not just one brother killed another brother. One of them brothers takes after Satan. Another brother takes after God. Not as Cain who was that wicked one and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil. And his brother's righteousness. And that's where you draw the line. We're in the middle of this chapter. What is there? There's a child of God. There's a child of Satan. There's righteous works. And there's evil works. There's no middle line. There's no walking down the middle of the road. You're either of Satan or you're of God. You're either righteous or you're evil. You either hate or you love. So we're taking two boys from Genesis 4 and we're seeing laid out in the eyes of God two children of the entire world population in the eyes of God. God either sees a type of Abel or God sees a type of Cain. There's no others. But marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. All right, so what's Cain? He's the world. And he hates you. Don't marvel. Say, well, why does my family hate you? They don't hate you. Well, they don't have anything. They hate Jesus. They hate God. They hate righteousness. They hate that you're a child of God. They hate the light. They hate. What's that hate come from? It comes from Satan. And when we go in all the world and preach the gospel, we bring that light to them. We bring the love of God to them because under their father, Satan, they don't know what light is and they don't know what love is. And the only way they can see love is not going to see it by Jesus Christ. They're going to see it in the Christian. And if we don't have no love, they're just going to see Cain in religion. And throughout history, you don't see a Bible-believing Christian killing others. You see religion killing. And I've got to call the question today. These, these people, when they say, oh, I'm going to get a gun and I'll shoot the person if he, if he intrudes. That's not a good atmosphere. So marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. That's Cain. He hated his brother. So a remarkable study for you to go back and read on your own time. Genesis chapter 4. See Satan. See God. See a child of Satan. See a child of God to those two boys. And God stood up for the, for the child of God, though dead. He said, listen, what'd you do? I don't know. I'm not my brother's keeper. I hear your brother's blood crying out to me. What'd you do? I'm not my brother's keeper. Fine, you're cursed. That's before the blessing of Abraham, Genesis 12. He said, all right, you did that to my child. That was my child. Paul, it's hard for you to kick against the prince. Why persecute thou me? So we rest assured that however we are treated by the kings of this world, God will be avenged. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay. And then Cain went out, he went out and built the cities. Well, where is the most criminalous, depicable, darkness place on this planet? Wherever you go, it's our cities. That's where the crimes are. 
That's where people don't come out in the middle of the night and they don't wait for the sun to come up. That's where music first shows up as far as man. And look at Ezekiel 28 when music shows up with Lucifer. In the Bible, music comes from the line of Cain. Kind of interesting. Who's the first one that had a, a marriage of multiple wives? It came from Cain's side. And then that guy boasts about killing somebody. That's Cain. Sin, 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 sin. We know that we have passed from death to life. We're living. We're alive. By Jesus Christ. Cain doesn't have that. A child of Satan, he has no life. John the Baptist says in the last, last verse of chapter 3, He that has the Son has life. But he that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Hell and the lake of fire is so wicked that God does, you know, even though in hell and the lake of fire you live forever, you are living. God says, it's, he doesn't call it life. He says, perish. He says, wrath of God. He says, lake of fire. So we see two people here. We see those the child of God. We see those the child of Satan. Because we love the brethren. Now, is that our salvation? No. That is a work after faith that we saw in James. We love our brethren. We love our fellow Christians. We will help them out. Does the children of Satan help each other out? Yeah. Is it for love? How can it be? They don't know what love is. Some people do it to get their name in the newspaper. You ever wonder how some of these things they end up in the news? This guy helped us. Well, how do they know? How do they find out? Somebody had to call. It's for, it's for fame. Oh, I gave money to this charity. Hey, do you claim it on taxes? This guy jumped on the landmine, saved me in World War II. Okay, and, you know, that was an impulse moment. <coughs> Had he thought about it and could come back and redo that life, which you can't, I don't think he'd do it again. Because that moment, if he's child of the devil, he stepped on that landmine, blew himself up. He doesn't get life. He gets the wrath of God. I don't think he'd do it again. Where we're told as Christians, as far as the brethren, we are to put our life forth. We're going to read that in a minute. As Christ gave himself forth. For husbands that are, that are over wives that are saved. We're to give ourselves. We're not just supposed to be thinking about our lives. I was thinking about last night. They say that on the Titanic when it went down, the band played, you know, near my God. We don't know. I have no idea. But my question is, there wasn't enough lifeboats. And that was a proven fact. A lot of people didn't get in them because they didn't believe that ship was going to sink. Was there any Christians that gave up lifeboats and preached Christ on those decks that that boat went down? Did anybody, hey, come on, get in this boat. Get, no, no, no. Let them go. I've got to turn. I may go in that water freeze, and this ship may blow up. Whatever. I'm going to be blown up to Jesus Christ. Or I'm going to end up as a popsicle before Jesus. These people are dying and going to hell. Let them live a little longer so they can survive and hear the gospel again. That's the love of, of a Christian. We get accused all the time when we preach on the street. You show no love. You, you, you're mean. You're not. No, you don't realize what the real love is. We go down there every week. Try to be down there every week. It's cold, flu, hospital, whatever. It is. We try to be there because we want you to hear what God wants from you. We want you to hear the love of God to give you another opportunity because you're going to die one day. And you don't know when it is. We know that we have passed from death to life. Because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Who did not love his brother? All right. So Cain is of that wicked one. And so is our families, our co-workers, our friends who have never believed. On, they are not as good as you think they are. And whatever their intentions of doing something for you, it's not love because the Bible says God is love. 
We got to get that. We got to realize when somebody's of Cain and of the devil, they need to hear the gospel. They need to get saved. I don't care what well, I don't care what good things they do. You're either a child of God or you're a child of the devil. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hates his brother, it's Cain. So any hatred is of Cain. He's a murderer. And that's exactly what Cain was. He was a murderer. And ye know. And ye know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Now we say, well, well, we kind of a little stumbled over that verse last night. But if I'm a child of God, what are we just reading in this chapter? I don't sin, do I? I can murder somebody and plead the blood of Jesus Christ. I mean, with a complete repentant heart of being sorry. Cain was a murderer. Now get this. We know God said he was a murderer. Forget about the mark. Forget about the curse. Cain never, as we can see in the Bible, never got right and never repented. Cain does not have life, according to chapter 3. Cain's going to die, according to chapter 3. Cain is in hell today because of his sin, because of his hatred for his brother. So, John chapter 3 verse 15 teaches us that there's a false doctrine saying that within time everybody will go to heaven. Cain died as a sinner. He did not have his sins washed in the blood. He was not of the child of God as we already read. He was a child of the devil. Any children of Satan die and they do not have eternal life. It's the wrath of God. Now a child of God, you are a child of God, you get eternal life. You may sin, we're all sinners, but you still got the eternal life. Now you will be judged at the judgment seat of Christ and you will lose for your sins. But you don't lose. Your sins will be wood, hay, or stubble, and it gets burnt up, ashes. You don't get nothing out of it. You lose a reward. If a child of the devil sins, he is charged with that sin, and he gets the wrath of God. Hereby, we perce hereby perceive we the love of God. The love of God. It's not the love of Satan. Now, like I said, we looked at the child of God. It is his blessed hope. Jesus is coming. We're going to be like him. We're going to have his righteousness. We are not sinners. If we do sin, we have Christ to wash us from our sins. From sins, we go to devil. From the devil, we go see, we see the children of the devil. We see a type of a child of the devil. We see Cain. We see that he has no eternal life. Now let's go back to the Christian. Let's work our way back now. Let's get back to the Christian. Let's get back to God. We went all the way up on the hill. We went down, 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 down. We are in the pit of hell right now with Cain, and now we're going to start climbing back up. That's where this chapter is leading us. Hereby perceive we the love of God, not Satan. Because he laid down his life for us. Satan laid down nothing for nobody. Salvation is wrought in God that laid down his life. Hereby we... Hereby, I can say, hereby perceive we the love of God because he, God, laid down his life for us. Who laid down his life? Jesus Christ. So God is Jesus. That is the love of God. Jesus Christ. This, cha this chapter, this verse 16. 3, 16. Did you get that? John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 1 John 3, 16, Hereby perceive the love. Now, do you think John sat that down and said, Well, I, there were no chapter verses. There was no chapter markings. There were no verse markings when John wrote this letter. Amazing how 3, 16 works out both ways. Now, that's not authority of the Holy Spirit. I don't know what is. Because he laid down his life for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. 
and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. And when you read Fox's Book of Martyrs, it has happened. And the husband, again, Ephesians 5, 25, he's to lay down his wife, life for his wife. We have character as children of God that we love each other. Yeah, there's stories out there of Satan's children, but there's no love of God. But whoso has this world's good, whatever you have, whatever God's given you, and sees his brother have need, and shut up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwells the love of God in him? So, I guess the question is, you got somebody in church, they have a need. They can't meet it. And you know they got that need. And you have the means to meet that need. And you don't do it. Well, where is your love? And Christians, sometimes they will not make it known. The world will put a big show on. The world will do something that you may know you're helping somebody. But Christians, sometimes, you know, he'll put it in an envelope. And for the treasure, give this to this family. And they don't even put their name. They'll go up to somebody, they'll shake their hand, and in their money, in their hand will be money to be passed. We've had, stuff in our door We've had stuff in the door of our car. I've had the church treasurer come up to me, hand me a check of the church. Someone's giving us money. They don't go out on the street, yeah, hey, I just gave them a hundred bucks. Christians are willing to help other Christians. So, how do you know someone in your church is really a Christian? What are they doing? Now, the world's good to see his brother. How about another thing? Let's step away from the Christian for a minute here, if I may. What's another way a Christian can help a child of the devil? Go into all the world and preach the gospel, tell them what they need to do to be saved. You got the goods, you got the salvation. My little children. I think we read that somewhere in this verse. We're working our way back. Let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And the Bible says, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Let's put love in action. Hereby we know that we are of the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And shall assure our hearts before him. So, having the surety is by loving the brethren. God will implant in our heart if we love the brethren. He'll give us strength. He'll give us the truth. For if our heart condemns us, we know our sin. Oh, man, I did that wrong. Oh, Lord, I am so sorry. I am tired of doing that. God is greater than our hearts. And knoweth all things. God knows that sin that you did, God knows. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. You didn't realize you did it. Satan got you. Your flesh got you. You pled the blood. I'll forgive you. I know. You wanted to do that. Come on. Don't give me that. Don't give me that con prayer. You wanted to do that sin. I know. You got caught afterward. That's one of them worldly. I'm sorry. Beloved, if our hearts condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. If I don't know I'm sinning, I have confidence in God that he wants me to be a pure child. He wants me to be a sinless child. He wants me to be a righteous child. Recognize that from this chapter? He will come up to me at the right time and say, son, you're doing something wrong. Now we need to deal with it. And that is what, I, I do this. I don't think any, many, many people do this. I will at times when I'm alone and it's quiet and nothing, you know, disturbing during the usually, well, if I wake up in the middle of the night, it's quiet. And I, I'll say, Lord God, just laying on the pillow, say, what things in my life are disturbing you? What sins are before you right now that I need to get 
plans I need to get right. And usually the first thing that shows up is patience. If you want to know the unknown of your sins, God is going to show you for one reason. What well, we already read. You're his son. What father would not tell a child, hey, you're wrong? God the Father wants you to plead the blood of Jesus Christ. He wants you to have Christ's righteousness. He wants you to be sinless. So he will forgive you sins that you know you're doing, and he will show you what you're doing that is a sin to make you more like Christ. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments. When we have needs, our Father will meet our needs. When you help other brethren, when you help others, when you acknowledge your sin, even the sins you don't know you're doing, you acknowledge them and plead them. As we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight, being doers of the word. you got to be a doer of the word, not just a hearer. you got to do what that word says in order to ask God and believe he's going to give you. It's not a blank check. And this is his commandment. That we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ. Which the writer, John, is writing to Christians who have done that. Okay, you've done that? You are a child of God. And you love one another. As he gave us commandment. The devil's children don't do that. The devil's children do not believe on the name of Jesus Christ. They are not the children of God. They don't love one another. And if you remember, we started the chapter out, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called the sons of God. We've come from the sons of God. We've gone all the way down to Cain, a child of the devil. We worked our way back up, and here we are back to verse 1. Sons of God again. For he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. Hereby we know that he abides in us by the Spirit which he has given us, sealing us, certifying us that we are the sons of God. And we stand above the world. We stand above Satan. We are not sinners in the eyes of God by the new nature. The old nature that keeps creeping up. We are righteousness by his son. We have opportunity when we do sin, whether we know it or when we don't know it, to plead the blood of Jesus Christ. And our Father looks out for us. And since, verse 17, when you have a brother who has a need, he's a brother, he's a son of God. You're a son of God. Your family, your brothers, help each other out. Now, what is Satan in his brotherhood? And you'll find this in Proverbs. You can choose a friend, but you can't choose family. Satan's family, you're just born into it. No choice about it at all. As far as children of God, you can choose the right church. You can choose the right people. It's your opportunity. You can walk in a church saying that these people are just worldly and godly. I'm getting out, I mean, worldly and ungodly. I'm getting out of here. I'm going to go find a good church. And you find a good church that loves and everybody like that. You've chosen those people. And if you're good in doing what God wants you to do in your life, they'll choose you. You weren't born in the old nature of Satan. By the... And if we all follow the principles set before us as children of God, we are one family. And we're to be a family of God better and more so than the family of Satan. Because our father is all love. Their father does not know what love is. Our father is willing to forgive us our sins. Their father is the sinner. The children of our father love us. At least they're supposed to. The children of Satan want to kill you. So 
So the character and the attitude that God is love is supposed to be in his children. And the character and the attribute of Satan lies, deceit, murder, hatred. That's in his children. So when we all get to heaven, we're given new bodies, we're given sinless bodies, we're given perfected bodies, we're given righteousness, there's no hate, there's no murder, there's no sin. Wonderful. The children of the devil, they go to a place that's sin. They go to a place where there's no love. They go to a place where there's no grace, no mercy, because they don't show it. It is not recognized by God. But oh, what our Father does for us. And then we see by this, the love of God abides forever. If God did not love me and keep me and seal me and certify me, he would never love me. I am kept forever. So when you say, oh, I lost my salvation, you're really telling God you don't love me. And after what he's done for us through Jesus Christ, that'd be a false statement.